Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about an unusual pulsar that we've known about for a long time known as the Black Widow. But we're going to be talking about a new discovery coming off that pulsar that was published in a paper in May of 2018. Welcome to What The Math. So we are here on Earth right now, and the pulsar we're going to be looking at is really, really, really far away, at a distance of about 6,500 light years away from us toward the center of the galaxy. It's known as the Black Widow. It's actually one of the few named pulsars out there with a peculiar, somewhat scary name. I'm going to go there just to show you what you'll see. And basically, this is a typical neutron star. Um, this one is not very realistically represented in Space Engine, unfortunately, because it doesn't seem to have any accretion disk. But this specific pulsar doesn't just have an accretion disk. It has an entire cloud of stuff um, flying in this area, which I'm going to show you in a few seconds when we recreate this in Space Engine. It has a partner, which is right there. This partner is currently what seems to be a brown dwarf. Basically, it's a super, super large planet or a very, very small star, a so-called failed star. Because of this brown dwarf, we call this pulsar a black widow. If you know anything about spiders, black widows are the spiders that basically eat their partners after mating. And because of this, because of this unusual feature, this is why we named this pulsar Black Widow as well, because it's actually eating its partner. It's uh, absorbing the mass of this um, brown dwarf that probably used to be a star before this, and its mass got eaten away by the pulsar. And at some point, uh, two things will happen. Either this planet will completely disappear and the pulsar will become a neutron star quietly sitting in the darkness of space, or what's more likely, or possibly at least, is that it will eat so much mass that it will reach its limit and then disappear. Now, we don't really know what's going to happen to it. It might turn into a black hole or it might explode into a very brilliant supernova. But let's not rush things. First of all, let's actually take a look at this uh, brown dwarf just so you can see what it looks like. It's basically a very large Jupiter-like planet, but a lot more massive than Jupiter. The mass currently in Space Engine is at 22 masses of Jupiter, but it's probably even more than that. And what's not shown here is the amount of stuff that's actually coming off this planet. It's inside the pulsar's so-called Roche limit, or Roche lobes that is, so it's actually losing mass at all times. It's basically poofed up so much that there's a lot of gas here. So let's go to Universe Sandbox just so I can kind of help you visualize this. So let's take our own Jupiter here and place it around the Pulsar Black Widow. We're going to start with a slightly farther away distance, but we're going to basically make it more realistic and place it at a distance so that a single orbit takes approximately uh, 9.2 hours. So the orbital period here is going to be relatively short. So there is that Jupiter, but we're actually going to rename it. Let's, let's name it... Um, after the actual pulsar, it's known as um, PSR B1957 uh, plus 20. And this here is going to be the partner, so we're going to call it B. Uh, so this pulsar was actually discovered in 1988, um, and the university that studied this the most is University of Toronto, one of the universities that I've attended a long time ago. And basically, um, what's really interesting about this particular pulsar is that well, unlike other pulsars, it's basically eating up its uh, companion so much that it's creating a lot of really crazy effects. First of all, uh, we think that there is a huge, huge gas cloud around this pulsar. We're going to try to recreate this as well. So it may kind of look something like this. There's basically a tremendous amount of material in here. And most of it, or I guess all of it in some sense, is from the Companion. It's essentially stolen or taken away from the Companion and deposited right here all over the star system. Now, the interesting thing about Black Widow is that because of the amount of stuff in the star system, because of the amount of stuff orbiting in here, and there it's 
that is doing its um, pulsating thing now. Um, it, this is so much mass that it actually has an effect on bending the light coming off the Black Widow. And because this object is tightly locked, it's always facing with the same um, direction, same face, toward the stars. So the temperature is always super high. The other side might be a little bit cooler, but not by much. Now, this is kind of what it looks like in this system. Possibly a lot more dust and a lot more cloud stuff, but I can't really place anymore without causing the frame to drop dramatically. But here's the interesting part. So this pulsar, as it pulsates, uh, releases the jets that we can then detect back on Earth. But because of the amount of material here, because of the amount of stuff here, we can actually detect those jets a lot better since they actually get bent by the mass that's within the star system. In other words, we actually get what's known as the lensing effect. The lensing effect is caused by all of this dust here. And this lensing effect is very, very unique and very unusual in, because it's actually just a perfect alignment of dust, the uh, other object, the uh, brown dwarf, and the pulses coming off the Black Widow. And because of all of this, we can actually see all of these pulses magnified as if they were um, maybe 80% or 90% closer to us than they really are. Now, as we develop this technique, we'll be able to get even higher magnification. In other words, we'll be able to actually discern these uh, jets with a lot more accuracy and be able to see them. And let me just remove some of the dust so you can see this a little bit better. But basically, what we can actually see is a much higher resolution of these two jets. Well, actually, just one of the jets because uh, the other one is pointing in the opposite direction. And we can actually uh, now be able to create a much more detailed picture of what's coming off these uh, pulsars. And this, of course, means that once we find more and more of these, uh, and also once we find some of these pulsars that they even have higher magnification, we'll be able to study them in a lot more detail and actually discover a few things about um, pulsars that we didn't really know before. Now, over the last few years, we've discovered more similar objects, and this, uh, this actually has a type now. And these types of binaries are now always called Black Widows, because they're basically eating up their companion object, and they're uh, destroying its mass that's essentially absorbed uh, by the pulsar. And as you probably know, or you may have heard from other videos, um, as pulsars absorb their mass of the object, their partner object, they start uh, pulsating and spinning even more. And at some point, once the spin is too high, they might actually fall apart. Or if the object disappears, uh, with time, the pulsar will actually slow down and most likely become just a quiet neutron star. And so that's kind of the story of this unusual pulsar that's about 1500 year, uh, light years away from us. And uh, what makes this even more interesting is that this might also be one of the most massive uh, neutron stars we've discovered. Uh, we currently think that its mass is anywhere between 1.66 to possibly even 2.4 masses of our sun, which actually puts it at the limit of pulsars. In other words, we think that it's at the point where it might actually get enough mass to change completely, either turn into a black hole or go supernova. Well, other than that, that's all we know about this unusual object, and just the fact that it has such a cool name definitely makes it worth talking about. Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.